Give to Caesar what is Caesar's and give to God what is God's. This is the favorite reference of those who advocate separation of church and state. And the church and state should indeed be separate. Church history is full of enough proofs that when the church plays with politics, the faith becomes a victim. We also have enough proof from history that when politicians become moral teachers, then we also have a problem. The separation of church and state must be respected. But there should be no separation between God and man. Because when God is separated from man, man loses. God does not lose. Man loses. Unfortunately, in the advocacy for the separation of church and state, it has evolved into something like government versus God. It has evolved into something like government blaspheming God. It has evolved into something like government cursing bishops. It has evolved into something like there is no freedom to worship. There is no freedom to express your faith. You should not mention God. You should not, you should not have crucifixes in hospitals. This is not separation of church and state. In the last months, my dear brothers and sisters, I have given myself some time listening to our politicians talking about honesty, talking about their commitment against corruption, talking about protecting the interest of the country above family interests, talking about justice for the poor, talking about reaching out to the poor and giving jobs to the jobless. All the values sound very good and sound very positive. But the more I listen, the more I become uncomfortable. Why, you ask me? I struggled with it until I came to a conclusion that politicians have become moralizing teachers and politics has become an instrument for moralizing. Is there anything wrong with it? There is. What is wrong with it? Please do not forget, my dear brothers and sisters, that these are the same politicians who have declared that God is dead. These are the same politicians who have declared that it was stupid of God to die on the cross. It was the same politician who taught us, who taught us that the Pope is the son of a war. My dear brothers and sisters, this kind of moralizing comes from the death of God, the killing of God. And therefore, where do moral values come from when there is no God? When you, when you declare that God is not worth believing, hindi ako bilib jan. When you, when you declare that God is not worth believing and I have another God for myself, my dear brothers and sisters, if you kill God, where will your moral values come from? From the air? If you catch your moral values from the air, then the fruits of those moral values will also be air. The country does not have roots. The country has lost its origin. The country has lost its God. It becomes problematic, my dear brothers and sisters, when the same words are used, 
The same ideas are used, but the meaning is already different. When you speak about honesty, when you speak about truthfulness, when you speak about integrity, when you speak about life, when you speak about rights, how can you debate with that? But the problem is, we indeed cannot debate with that because they are all positive values. And if you debate with them, you become like the antithesis of those values. But there is still something wrong. Because God has been killed. God has been declared dead. God has been declared irrelevant. And therefore, when you speak of values that do not come from God, then those values can only be harmful. Although we use the same words and we use the same ideas, those values can actually become even funny and ridiculous because they are disconnected from God. Have you noticed that the teaching of theology has been replaced with the teaching of religion? What is the difference? When you teach theology, the starting point is God. When you teach religion, the starting point is man. In other words, my dear brothers and sisters, when we ignore that our starting point is God, then we can create values that are popular. Then you get salvation by popularity in the survey. Then you get grace by popularity in the polls. And then, where is God? God is considered dead and the values are not even godly, but the values are interspersed in between incoherent speeches. The values of honesty, anti-corruption, freedom, life are interspersed in policies, but they are stand alone. They are not connected to God anymore. So what is happening? The death, not only of God, but the death of conscience. Sexuality has become political. Before the government, there was sexuality of man and woman given by God. Family has become political. Before government, there was only the family. And now, family life has been politicized including abortion, including contraception. Sexuality has been politicized as a right and therefore separated from God. It has evolved into something separated from God and it can only desensitize our consciences and kill our consciences as we cause the death of God, we will also cause the death of conscience. And when conscience is killed and when conscience is replaced by values that are just floating in the air, not coming from God, the next death is the death of the nation. A country that has no God will not survive. And a country that has compromised its conscience will also be destroyed. There is separation of church and state and we must protect it. But the honor of God must be preserved and we must return to the basics and be able to proclaim to power. In the beginning, before you existed, in the beginning, before political systems, in the beginning, before political parties, in the beginning, there was God. God became flesh and He pitched His dwelling among us. 
That is the starting point of all. Because a nation that disconnects itself from God, a nation that kills God, will kill conscience. And when conscience is killed, the nation will follow in death. We pray. We pray that our country may recover its soul. We pray that our country, looking forward to 500th anniversary of the first Mass and the first baptism in our shores, will return to the Lord. We are asking the Lord to heal our land, and the Lord indeed can heal our land. But the Lord, before He heals our land, waits for us to turn from our wicked ways, to turn from our selfishness, to bring down our atheism, to bring down our values that we just caught in the air and return to the values entrusted to us by God. Because those godly values can only be for our good. Let us turn to the Lord. Let us return to the Lord. Let us keep the Lord in our hearts. Let us keep the Lord in our families. Let us keep the Lord in our communities. Let us keep the Lord in government, in everything of us. Because where the Lord is, everything will be for our good. <laughs>